Hello and welcome, this is Ike Hoffman with Tactica Real Estate Solutions, and today we're gonna to be in Tactica's value add model, focusing on the partnership distribution tabs. I plan to show you how to take LP investment return data and further break it down for the individual LP investors. As an example, let's say total LP contributions are $4.9 million. However, each individual investor is typically investing in much smaller chunks, such as a $50,000 or $100,000 investment. I plan to show you how to enhance the analysis to show the more granular breakdown for each individual investor. A customer brought this idea to my attention and I see how it could be valuable to demonstrate what kind of cash flow they could expect at different contribution thresholds. If you've been enjoying Tactica's CRE tutorial content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like the video, subscribe to our channel and allow us to notify you when we're releasing new video content. Let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. We're currently looking at the IRR waterfall distribution analysis in Tactica's value add model. This Excel workbook is linked below, along with some other blog posts that cover the common partnership distribution structures. You can see that the LP data is presented as the aggregate. This tends to be the industry standard, although I've seen some investment memorandums use a round number like $100,000 and will show how the cash flows would look for an investor each year. As an example, looking at this data, Let's say we have an LP that has put in $100,000, uh, therefore they command approximately a 2% profit interest in total LP cash flows. So to get that, we would take $100,000 divided by the approximately 4.9 million, and that equates to roughly a 2% profit interest. In year one, they received 2% of that 205,301 cash flow. That equates to $4,156. Over the life of the investment, we're projecting a 1.93 equity multiple, which would result in that $100,000 turning to $193,000 in total cash flows over seven years. This, is, this includes both cash flow from operations and the sale proceeds that would take place in year seven. As you can see, it's not too complex to back into the math for the individual investors but we can come up with something that's a little more organized and intuitive. So let's run a theoretical scenario. In this deal, we're gonna say that there are eight different LP investors and we wanna track the cash flows for each one. We're gonna list out all the different partners and then we also want to note their percentage of the LP. I'm gonna write in LP number one and then we'll drag this information all the way over through column AA. So there are eight different LP investors and we'll make this a brown text cell because we wanna be able to alter this cell with the actual names of the LPs. And then we wanna put in contribution percentages as well. So I'm just gonna type in some random percentages here. I'll do 15% for LP1, 20%, 10%, Ooh, and that formatting is what I want for all of them. So I'm just going to take that formatting and apply it to every cell in the LP percentage row. And then we'll say 5%, 5%, 15%, 15%, and I think one more 15% will get us to 100%. And we'll sum this to be sure. And that's going to be actually a black text cell because it's a formula that we won't need to alter. I'm just going to label this as total. Again, I'll make it a black text cell. So we have eight different LPs with different contribution amounts that will add out to this 4.94 million in LP equity required to close the deal in year zero. So now we want to track the cash flow for each LP every year of the investment hold. So I'm gonna say year, and then I'm just gonna grab all the data to the left and drag all the way down. I'm gonna delete this zero right here and reformat, put everything on the right side of the column. That looks good. And I will make it the same purple color so we know that it corresponds with the LP data and apply it up above too. There's really just one formula that will do all the heavy lifting. 
So we're going to say equals, and then we'll take the contribution percentage and lock the row. And we're going to multiply that by the contributions and distributions summarized in, in column F, the LP cash flows. And we're going to lock that column. And for now, I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to drag that over through LP number eight and all the way down through potential year 10. This scenario only have seven years, but with all tactical models, you have up to a 10 year investment hold. And you'll notice that the model will fire in air because we're running a seven year scenario, but there's, there's 10 years of, of potential outcomes. So I'm gonna come into this formula, I'm gonna make a minor adjustment. I'm gonna say if error, if there's an error, that value error, then we just want it to be blank. And I'll drag that over again and down. And now it's showing up as blank. And then I'm gonna grab the header for each partner. So LP1, these are the, in column T, that's LP1's cash flows. Um, and then LP, all the way through LP8, which is summarized in column AA. I'm just gonna format this a little bit, center the data so it looks nice. I don't want decimal places. And then I'll do some more formatting to make it purple. I also made the negative, the contribution amount near zero red, just so that pops a bit. And then in the net cash flow, we can do a sum formula. Drag that all the way over. And then finally, we can take the IRR calculation for the for the aggregate cash flow, LP cash flow, copy and paste that. Now I'll calculate it for each individual investor as well. And it will be the same for each investor. So the only thing that changes is now we have a nice breakdown of each individual investor's contribution and distribution. And that's all dependent on how much money they're putting in, into the project in year zero. Just to finalize this, I'm gonna make the formatting a little nicer up top. And the one thing I wanna do is, you, imagine if you had like 25 LPs and they all have 2% and 3%, maybe 5% ownership stakes. Um, it might be easy to make a mistake. And right now the total adds out to 100, so that's that's good. But you know, if we type accidentally type 4% instead of 5%, that goes down to 99%. So what I wanna do is I wanna add some conditional formatting and create a new rule and I just if if this cell doesn't equal one we want it to turn red so it's clear that we're, we're missing we mistype something or we're missing some information because all LP contributions need to add out to 100% so I'm gonna turn that red okay so now it's red so now if we come back put in 5% and it goes up to 100 now it's 100% we're good to go so again, if, if you do make a mistake, mistype something, you're over or under 100%, it's gonna be obvious thanks to our conditional formatting. Adding more columns for investors is easy. If you, if you had maybe 10 LPs, you could just come in here and, and drag over the information. You just need to relabel. Um, obviously the percentages would be, would be messed up, so you need to make sure you're getting back to Contributions amount amounts that will tie out to 100%. Not there yet. Let's make this one 10%. Feel free to delete any columns that aren't relevant in your analysis. And the beauty is that you can do the same analysis on every partnership distribution tab. So the, the pref equity plus profit interest or the simple interest waterfall, whatever tab you're on, you would follow the exact same steps we did here and then you could see the individual LP equity cash flows. This particular analysis we added is very ownership specific, and it's, it's one of the reasons I don't include something like this in the baseline analysis. I realize some groups might have one LP, while, while some may have dozens. It, it, it would just create a lot of extra work for, for the people using this model to cut down the columns or add columns to make it perfectly tie out to whatever the partnership structure is of, of the customer using the model. Um, and again, this is it's pretty industry standard just to see returns from the LP's perspective as that aggregate whole, how the, how the model looked in its baseline state. But hey, I'm happy to arm you with some new ideas if you wanna take this analysis a little bit further. 
that sums up the video. We took Tactica's IRR waterfall model and enhanced it by breaking out individual investor cash flow data. The return metrics are all the same, but it could be helpful to see actual cash flow projections at different investment thresholds, especially if investor maybe isn't as in tune with the return metric terminology like the equity multiple and the IRR. Maybe they're a high income earner in a different industry, or perhaps they're retirees where really the only thing that matters is cash flow and they need to have an accurate projection of what that investment distribution will look like every year during the investment hold. And finally, maybe your investors will appreciate a more customized presentation where return cash flow is tailored to them. If you've been enjoying Tactica CRE tutorial content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give the video a like, subscribe to our channel, and allow us to notify you when releasing new video content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.